Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode of our Let's Play of Dwarf Fortress Hail Glaze. This is our new Let's Play that we just started. This is the third episode. As you can see, we've done nothing yet. We just have this barren expanse of snow, which looks a lot like sand. Um, anyways, this is a Tundra Embark, so uh, it's a bit of a challenge. You know, we've got our own things that... Um, Oh, we've got our own set of challenges and problems that we're going to be having to deal with, which we covered in the first two episodes, but I think it should be okay, as long as I don't forget how to do some things, so, and if I do, I can always look it up. No big deal. Uh, something I was just thinking about, as I was uh, loading up the game, I went ahead and started auto labor, and I also started auto butcher, but I was thinking, we may need to modify the watch for auto butcher because we don't really want them to be butchering. Um, I know this sounds kind of grisly, but kind of our, our plan for maybe food survival might be slaughtering dogs at some point. And we don't really want puppies to get butchered because they're not going to give us as much sustenance. So we might want to we might want to change the default settings for when puppies get slaughtered because uh, as it's set right now, basically, it's probably set to only allow like five female puppies and one male puppy, and you know that that means that we'll probably be slaughtering a lot of male puppies, which we won't get as much out of. So that's just something that was kind of rumbling around in my head. It's not something we need to do like right now, um, obviously because we don't have any puppies. But we did bring like I think three female dogs and one male dog with us. As well as, I think we brought some egg layers too, so we're gonna have to build some nest boxes at some point. That's like, really, that's kind of like stuff that's sort of down the road. Our first priority, since this is tundra and it's like hella cold, because I, I didn't turn temperature off, I mean, what would be the point? Um, we need to get underground, and we need to get everything underground with us. So, uh, it doesn't really matter where we go in. <laughs> Because there are no no landscape features here. I mean, I guess it makes most sense to go in sort of in the middle here. So to get down here, we're going to have to. Uh, I believe we're going to have to make a. We have to channel, I think, to make a ramp. Um, this isn't something that I normally do. Normally, I just go straight into the side of a mountain, and believe it or not. Uh, this has actually been something before that has stymied me on my campaign score. Like, the first few times I started playing Dwarf Fortress, I was like, how do I just dig straight down? You know, I would try to do like, uh, up downstairs and I don't think it really worked. So, uh, <clears throat> so we need to channel kind of a path here down and then what that does is it basically just digs a hole straight down and then we're going to want to um, it'll it'll basically they can come in through here and we can make a pathway I hope I hope so let's just see what happens here okay so the channeling is going yeah you can see there's an up ramp now uh, what is this sandy clay loam interesting so Okay. Uh, we're not going to be able to keep our animals above ground. We're going to have to move them underground as well. <clears throat> Otherwise, they'll just, like, die. Okay. S yeah. So, you can see now we have the ramp on the... should have probably sent that the other direction. doesn't really matter. We have that ramp on the layer underneath the first layer. What is this? This is, looks like, yeah, it's loam, which is good because that means we can farm in it. Um, so, man, this is like a kind of exciting because I'd, I've never really like done this before. I, I haven't even ran a test run on this. So, you know, there could be some things that come up that I don't even really know how to deal with or haven't dealt with before. So we might have to come up with some ingenious things. What's this? It must just be where my cursor is. No, it's just a different color low. Okay. Well, um, I 
So this is our ramp down. And so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna come down here and maybe do an up down stair here. Like this. So that means that um, we'll do an upstair here. And then I guess our first layer probably needs to be uh, workshops. We're not going to do a single layer. I don't know why I did a single layer last time. It's very strange. So how do we want to plan this out? Well, we certainly have enough room. Uh, You know, actually, the first thing that we need to do, really, I'm getting a little bit, I'm, I'm, I'm stuck in like the old fortress mindset. I need to get myself out of that. Because, like I said, the first thing we need to do is we need to get everything, everything inside. So, uh, you know what, let's build a passageway off over here. And then we're going to do like a 10 by 10 room over here. It's kind of off center. That 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 I think that's going to kind of bug me. What's that two so I need to take off. Well, it's going to be a little off center, isn't it? See, now it's centered. And what is it? A one so this is like an 8 by 8, 8 by 10. Now it's centered. Okay, um, and what we're gonna do is we'll use that as just a catch-all stockpile for everything. Boom. And then we also can pasture our animals in there as well. And then we'll deconstruct our wagon. And we'll get everything inside. Oh, almost forgot. Before we get too, too into things here, why don't we, we do have a few people who did submit some names for me, so I am going to get them added in, if at all possible. So we already have Mr. Kiern, and we have Thorum, Thoram, mighty Thoram. Uh, we also have a request for a uh, butcher named Pete. We don't really have a butcher yet, so Pete, you're gonna we're gonna put a put a pin in that. And then we have another request for a military dwarf named Durkin. Durkin. Rhymes with shuriken. Um, you know, we could uh, could make old Vukar here Durakin, since uh, Vukar does have some military skill. But I think we'll hold off because uh, not really a military dwarf per se. And then we have another request for a cook, Swedish chef, true to blue. Um, so we're gonna wait until we get another cook in. And then uh, we got a request for a craft dwarf named Hermie. So let's uh, let's see, Hermie, and it was uh, in honor of a female person. So we're gonna take care to make sure that it is a female craft dwarf. So we'll go with the leather worker here, Moses. So your new name is Hermie. Boop. Okay. So let me go ahead and put some stars here in my notepad, just to indicate that there are people who do not have roles yet that need them, so that I know to check them uh, whenever I start the game up next. Okay, so now we just uh, unpause and let them dig. Should not take too long to dig because this is loam, and loam is uh, fairly, fairly soft, so it's quick and easy to dig through. Do do. Maybe we should have brought more picks. I don't know, picks are just so expensive is the problem. I mean, copper is like the cheapest pick you can get, and it's still 44 a pop. So, I mean, this looks like sand. Really. Uh, might go down another layer then. Okay, uh, so let's go ahead and get a stockpile here. So this is gonna be a custom stockpile. And it's gonna, it's gonna hold everything. So we're going to go in and we're going to just change settings and we're going to enable everything. But then now let's go back through here and just make sure 
corpses we probably want to disable uh, refuse we will forbid corpses body parts I think everything else is going to be okay. So hopefully that'll get them to bring everything down in here. And then I think we can, yeah, we can still set a zone here. So this is going to be a little bit of a busy room until we can get... Um, until we can get some other places dug out, so... All right, so I'm gonna actually let them haul everything inside here first, because I want to get everything inside so that our dwarves can all be inside. And then we can work on digging out some basic workshops, some lodgings, and um, actually, let's go ahead and, I don't, I don't want to build on a sand layer. I don't like sand layers because you can't smooth out the walls. I mean, you guys know this kind of stuff. Let's just go down five layers and see what we find. It did say very deep soil here, so it's kind of funny. So it's like it's getting just warm enough right now to melt some of the snow. So they haven't started digging yet, that's fine. They're just trying to get everything inside, which is good. Hopefully, the animals don't go too stir-crazy there since it is sort of a small area and there's not going to be any food. Um, what we could do is, since we are trying to plan on breaching a cavern pretty quick, we could like go somewhere off in BFE and like make a big room. And then once we pop the cavern layer, it'll start growing grass and stuff like really slowly. So we might be able to keep animals, maybe. Oh, we'll see. We shall see. Oh, shnikes. I probably have to get that set up first. Duh. Oh, I remember now. Okay, 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 okay. I remember now why I just set that for an upstairs, because I was actually planning on not having... Just going straight down like that. That's it's one of my really bad habits in Dwarf Fortress is just digging a shaft like straight down, and that's actually a terrible idea. That's a terrible idea. Um, the reason that you don't want to do that is because you can't put choke points into these stairways straight down, like you can in hallways. So what I could do here, if I really wanted to make sure that this stayed fortified. I could just uh, choke this down to like a doorway or I could even put like a drawbridge there which would be even better and um, then you know if, if a beastie came we would have another layer of defense which is pretty cool all right so what's this okay silty clay again clay is good though because we can use clay maybe to make some things the only unfortunate part about that is the fact that it would require firing in a kiln so that would require fuel uh, that's an interesting color. Okay, so we finally are, are hitting some rock on this layer. So this is probably going to be the layer where we start our workshops. We might even go one more layer deeper, just just to make sure that we're not hitting uh, that we're not hitting some damn sand or something. Okay, how's this going up here? What's left on the wagon? S still some things. So it's going to be a minute. Okay, they're hauling everything down. That might not be enough room because of uh, of all the damn bituminous coal that apparently can't be stacked on top of each other. What's this? So this is orthoclase, I think. Yeah. Orthoclase. I think this is probably safe. I, I think this is probably safe. All right, so... Uh, first things first, we need to get some workshops made. So, hmm. Now that we're down here, it's not a huge deal. I mean, we want to be efficient, but at the same time, we don't really 
it's not a huge deal. Um, you guys know me. I like my, I like my, uh, my cross pattern here. I always, I like to try to do different things, but it seems like there's only a certain amount of stuff that you can really do. So, start off with, we don't, <laughs> we need a carpenter's workshop, even though it's not going to get a lot of use. Um, we need a mason's workshop, and we need um, a mechanic's workshop. Because of the fact that we're not going to be able to use a lot of, we're not going to be able to make bins. Um, at least not very many bins. I feel like that really lends itself very well to the idea of, um, using mechanisms as a trade good since mechanisms can't be put in bins anyways why not you know so uh, so what we'll do here is we'll have maybe like a carpenter um, a mason and a mechanic for starters so we're getting everything in here let's check out the thoughts of our dwarves I want to see if they're saying anything about how cold it is so if we read the dwarves, see it's Hermy. What's Hermy saying here? Uh, satisfied at work, fondness, talking and visiting with a friend. Okay. Uh, never feels hatred toward anyone or anything. Well, that's good. Rarely feels discouraged, is quite polite, takes no pleasure in their talents and appearance. Can be very single-minded, can sometimes act without deliberation. Enjoys the company of others. Has an active imagination, doesn't really see the point of working hard. Uh, this might not have been the expedition for you. Values self-control. Doesn't think one way or the other about leisure time. Use loyalty unfavorably. That's a very strange uh, personality quirk. Dreams of crafting a masterwork someday. Well, you know, Hermie, you are a proficient leather worker, so you might uh, you might you might succeed in that. Likes almondine, nickel, silver, cryolite figures, millstones, quivers, high boots, the color yellow, and the sight of the sister of sparkles. First to consume finger millet beer and horse. Hates leeches. Horse, horse meat. Mm. Lycot. Uh, fondness, talking, visiting with friend. Okay. I'm not really going to waste a whole hell of a lot of time uh, looking at dwarves that aren't named because, I mean, yeah, they're interesting. It is interesting. And with all the changes that Toadie's made, it's a lot better. But I don't want to waste a lot of game time with that. I, I, I want to look at y'all's dwarves. Y'all but I don't really care about the other dwarves so much. Okay, so Mr. Cairn immediately upon arriving said, what is there to do in a barren, uh, you know, icy wasteland? Well, get drunk. So uh, within the last week, she felt <laughs> euphoric due to inebriation and satisfied at work. Good work, good. Does not easily fall in love, rarely feels discouraged, is prone to strong feelings of lust. So basically Mr. Cairn um, is a sex fiend who likes to get drunk. Occasionally overindulges is somewhat quarrelsome. Could be considered rude. And just to kind of back up a little bit, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. Just uh, use protection, okay, Mr. Kieran? Generally acts with a narrow focus on the current activity. Often changes their mind to agree with somebody else. Tends to be swayed by the emotions of others. Does not go out of their way to help others. Does not trust others. Sounds to me like Mr. Kieran doesn't like other people very much. Values family greatly, though. Believes war is preferable to peace in general. Screw this big peace stuff. Let's go to war. Dreams of crafting a masterwork someday. Well, I mean, you're a cook, so you could make masterwork meals. So that'll probably happen. Likes cotton fabric, giant deer antler, lavender jade, tin, nice, giant hairs, yaks. Bucket slabs in the words of the reason of orbs. Prefers to consume parsnip wine. Hates flies. And then uh, our last name person right now is Thorum. Okay, so Thorum tied one on as well. Euphoric Duty Inauguration plus 200. How much did she get? 100. So does that mean that Thorum got drunk not one time, but twice already? Wow. 
Annoyed after having a drink without using a goblet, cup, or mug. Okay, so basically the Thorum was wheezing the juice, if any of you have watched Encino Man. Uh, and if you haven't watched Encino Man, I can't in good conscience recommend watching it, but uh, it was a favorite of mine when I was a teenager, which has been a while now. Wheeze the juice. Uh, and loved talking, visiting with their lover. Within the last season, he felt fondness talking, visiting with a friend, and love as they were caught up in a new romance. Who's who's romancing somebody here? Who's romancing? Thor Thoram immediately getting getting drunk and falling in love. How does this, what? I guess I could probably look at the relationship screen on Caught Up in a New Romance. It makes it, it really, uh-oh, it's Vukar and Thoram hooking it up. Because, see, she she uh, is caught up in a new romance, too. Aw. It's, so, it's so funny to hear it phrased that way, though, caught up in a new romance. So. Uh, can easily fall in love or develop positive feelings. Well, watch out, Vukar. Apparently, uh, Thoram falls in love pretty easily. It's not easily hate. Doesn't often feel envious of others. Doesn't handle stress well. Has a greedy streak. Doesn't stick with things if even minor difficulties arise. Again, watch out, Vukar. First, that everyone live as harmoniously as possible. Isn't particularly ambitious. Doesn't cling tightly to ideas. And is open to changing their mind. Is quite comfortable with others that have a different appearance or culture. Likes to keep things practical. Without delving too deeply into the abstract, values a harmonious existence, values decorum, dignity, and proper behavior, dreams of raising a family. Ooh. Likes alpaca wool, kiwi tooth, green tourmaline, iron realgar. I don't even know what that is. Amulets. Gauntlets in the shape of suns. Prefers to consume olive tree fruit, maize flower, and passion fruit wine. Hates toads. So we're going to have to keep an eye on this budding romance here between Thoram and Vukar. Um, we've, got a, we've got a budding romance going on. Man, oh man. Okay. Well, I guess that's a pretty good place for us to put a cut in. In our next episode. Uh, hopefully we're going to get everything moved into this temporary storage. So I don't think there's a whole lot left here. Hopefully. Yeah, there's, there's not much left. Some booze. Some coal. Yeah, just a few things. Then we'll break down the wagon. Uh, the reason we're not going to break down the wagon now is because when things are on the wagon, it treats it like they're in a stockpile, which means that um, they don't decay. They don't go bad. So uh, we want to make sure that that happens. Then once everything's gone, we will break down the wagon, get the wood from the wagon, and we can use that for beds or, well, pretty much beds. That's the only wooden thing we're going to be making early on. And uh, we're going to get our workshops done. You can see they're already being dug out. We're gonna get that stuff going and we're probably gonna go ahead and get our mechanic to making mechanisms uh, another thing that we need to do that's a vital impair um, importance is we need to dig a path an underground path do, 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 to the edge of the map and then put a ramp up and we need to I what I read is that you have to make it a road uh, so we're gonna put a road there so that when the caravans come or the migrants come they go down immediately underground in case it's really really cold so they don't die on the way in so i don't think they would but we don't want to take any chances right guys so that also means that we're probably going to need to put some kind of a gate down there as well because the baddies are going to come down that way too so anyways thank you guys so much for supporting this new series remember if you are interested in having a dwarf named for you or for someone else um feel free to leave a name in the comments below if you have an idea for like you know an RP role for your dwarf in mind, uh, feel free to leave that as well. It just know that either number one, it might not even happen, or number two, um, it might take a while to get your dwarf in. So, anyways, thank you guys so much. Don't forget to like. Until next time, game on.